So this is the second in my three part guide to sowing seeds and this one covers all the different modules and pots and things like that that I use. So uh, if you want the first uh, in the series then take a look in the description below and I'll link to that. And uh, there'll be a third part that covers uh, all the different composts and things that I use. So let's take a look. Uh, this is the second in my series of videos all about sowing seeds. And this one is all about module trays, all the different types of module trays that I use and why. You might not be able to see very well given the lighting conditions in the workshop, but basically I have all my module trays and plant pots on the shelf in front of me and find that really convenient. And that is where I store all the seeds that are currently open that I'm working from. And I like it like that because I'm always just like, although I've got a, a schedule that tells me what seeds I'm meant to be sowing, I'm always just like glancing through this and seeing what I've got open already and whether I might just sort of sneak in a few extras from these open seed packets. So let's take a look at the trays. So this is the tray I sow most things into. It's from Wilco and it is very flimsy and I tend to get three uses out of it before it kind of cracks like this or at the edges or something like that and I think they're a pound for three or four trays something like that uh, so it's not overly expensive but it's not ideal and the ribbing on them means that it can be a little bit difficult to get the seedlings out of the trays and you kind of have to work them out by pressing them like this. You can also press down at the bottom but that makes it more likely that you're going to break them. Some people kind of cut the base off these with scissors to make it easier to push them out with your finger but that would be a lot of man hours to do that. And if you're gonna do that, it's probably better just to spend some money on some higher quality seed trays. I tend to loan people a lot of seed trays. They tend to get left and stood on and all of that sort of thing. So I'm a bit loath to spend a lot of money on module trays, but uh, these have served me fairly well. What I'm trying now are these trays. So I've been sent these actually by the Garden Superstore and that'll be a running theme because I'm getting sent lots of stuff by the Garden Superstore at the moment. But these are nice and smooth, so easier to get things out of them. Uh, they're a good size, same size basically as the, that 40 cell tray that I just showed you. Um, but the nice thing about them is, you know, two of these fit in a single drip tray and it means that if you're sowing things that have got different germination rates or growing to maturity at different speeds, then you can sow sort of slightly smaller quantities, half quantities of these. Obviously you just could just cut those other trays in half as well. So these are quite nice. I'm finding them, they are a little bit easier to get the seedlings out of. Uh, they're slightly more expensive, but not a lot more expensive. I don't know whether they're gonna last any longer. I think they might do because I've got really good experience with their sort of big brothers and sisters. So I really like these trays. So that's a 12 cell tray. So sometimes I'll use this tray for lettuce, onions, uh, spinach, anything basically that's gonna be in the tray for you know 20 to 30 days. Things that are gonna be tra in the trays a little bit longer than that, I might use this size. So I might use this for brassicas, for example, that are not going to be in the, in the trays for too long. Sometimes I'll step up a tray size to the nine cell tray. And for things that are gonna be in a tray for a really long time, uh, I might use the six cell tray. So I love these. I love the fact that they stack really well uh, they last really well. So these, you know, I've probably used four or five, maybe six times, and uh, just keep on going. They're really smooth sized, sided, so everything kind of comes out of them really simply. Uh, I just really like them. And you can see I have a lot of them and I get 
through a lot of them because we sew a lot here and then for things that are going to get really big then things like peppers and tomatoes then they might end up in these pots and the really early peppers will go in these pots because the really early peppers you know started in December planted out in May that is a long time for something to be in a pot so I'll just pot that on uh, I always use, also use this for starting my super early potatoes um, and that's pretty much it to be honest I don't use any root trainers uh, so if I'm doing beans and peas I tend to use this size tray for beans this size, tr size tray for peas um, as I say this size tray for brassicas this size tray for onions and lettuce and so lots of uh, options here and I try to use obviously the smallest size tray that I can get away with so I use the least amount of compost and the least amount of growing space I do use grow lights for quite a lot of things as well so maximize the use of, gro of grow light space these are the drip trays that I use and I get these from Wilco and I've got loads of them and I've drilled a few holes in some of them so that they drain. The ones that drain are the ones I use outside and on the allotment and the ones that don't drain are the ones I use inside and I like the fact that everything fits in them you know so these pots fit in them these big pots kind of fit in them you can get four of those in there all of these pots, all of these trays all fit really nicely in them and they're just nice, small, easy to carry and uh, just kind of suits the quantity of things that I tend to sew. So the final topic related to these trays is watering so I will always top water everything until it's big it's got a big root system and it's growing actively which tends to be about 20 days or so and then I'll bottom water into these trays so I just find that that stops me getting the compost oversaturated and um, everything grows much healthier I never get any issues like damping off or anything like that uh, by doing it that way I think when you bottom water it's really easy to oversaturate your compost when you oversaturate your compost you tend to get lots of diseases uh, and sometimes rotting roots and things like that when you top water you generally it's very difficult to uh, over water i think when you're top watering i generally do it with a watering can or a little uh, bottle top waterer and uh, that works really nicely for me uh, you know, if you want more details of all the kind of specifics of sowing seeds then take a look at uh, the chapter of my ebook on sowing seeds and that has loads more videos and specific examples of you know sowing lettuce seeds and sowing brassica seeds and all of that sort of thing as do the individual growing guides on each type of plant so if you want details of the products that i use i always recommend people go to my amazon store so there's two ways to buy from the Amazon store. The first way is to just buy it direct from Amazon. Uh, and the second way is to use the comment field that I filled in on each of the items that I recommend in the store. And that will make a note of alternative sources. Now, sometimes, of course, you, the best source is just your local garden centre uh, or home bargains or B&M bargains or wherever you shop, a supermarket, whatever. Uh, sometimes it's an uh, online supermarket, garden supermarket like the Garden Superstore. Uh, I often just get it from Amazon, uh, which often ends up being the Garden Super Superstore anyway. But um, anyway, that's your options. I will put some specific links down below in the description to particular products that I've mentioned. But I use so many hundreds of different things that uh, Amazon is the easiest way to track them. So if you want more details on anything that I talked about in this video and all the other aspects of gardening, then I've got a freebie ebook. It's linked down below in the description. And uh, yeah, take a read if you want and give me some feedback. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.